Welcome back to Survival NS. I'm Jose, and this is George. Now, I've debated quite a bit about putting this video out, but the amount of misinformation and disinformation out there and some of the comments and the absolute absurdity of human behavior taking place out there as a result of the conflict going on in the Middle East, I just felt I had to shed a little light and set some of the story straight about some of the events that are taking place over in the Middle East and around the world. Now, just before we get started, I just want to make a few things clear before we get going here. First of all, I entertain comments and I respond to the majority of comments placed on my YouTube channel. However, with this segment, if you're going to place any hate speech or derogatory comments which are not appropriate, I will have you blocked and I will remove your comments. And number two, I did my own fact checking on some of the comments I'm going to make and I expect you not to take my word for it, but for you as well to do your own fact checking so, is America about to get involved in another war? Well, to answer that question, you're going to need to answer another question. And that is, would the U.S. allow Israel to go it alone in a war in the Middle East against all the neighboring Arab countries? Well, we all know the answer to that is a hard no. So currently, we've got two aircraft carrier strike groups in and around the Persian Gulf, the Red Sea, and a number of other naval vessels that are over in the Eastern Mediterranean. And all these warships are armed to the teeth. Now, do you honestly believe that all that firepower is there for little old Hamas? I don't think so. Now what I think is going on here is the United States is playing for time here in order to get all their chess pieces positioned in and around the Middle East. If you recall the first Gulf War, this is exactly what they did. They started placing all their naval assets, aircraft, bombers in and around the Middle East until they had everything in place before they went in. Now we keep hearing a lot of talk about whether or not this conflict is going to spill over to other neighboring countries in that region. Well, we don't have to wait very long because that's already happened. If you haven't been paying attention, Israel has already bombed the two international airports in Syria, both in Damascus and Aleppo. Then you've got the uprising happening over in the West Bank, which is about to spill over. You've also got the Yemenis, which is the Houthi group, firing missiles into Israel. And in the north, you now have Hezbollah, which are also firing missiles into Israel, prompting Israel to evacuate a great portion of nor northern Israel. Then just recently, we had the head of Hezbollah having a press conference and giving Israel an ultimatum to either pull out of the Gaza Strip or they're going to get involved. And Israel's already stated that they are not about to pull out of the Gaza Strip until their operation is completed there, which is getting rid of Hamas. And Turkey's leader publicly came out and stated that Hamas is not a terrorist group. I think we could all see where this is headed. Then, just a day or two after the massacre in Israel, we saw all kinds of protests on the streets all over the world, and they were celebrating 
actually celebrating the atrocities. Can anyone make that make sense? A day after this atrocity, in Australia we saw protests as well. And I heard on some of the social media and the mainstream media who were covering those events, we heard them shouting, gas the Jews. What? This is 2023, people. This is not 1939. Get an effing grip. In our schools, our kids are taught that hate speech and harsh words are hurtful and inappropriate behavior. And if you were to display that type of behavior on your social media platform, well, you'd be shut down and the thought police would be knocking on your door. However, as we have seen throughout the world in these pro-Palestinian protests, we have people spewing hate speech in front of local authorities, no less, and nobody bats an eye. And can anyone explain what the hell is going on on the college campuses in the United States? It seems like every kid there is pro-Palestinian and against Israel for some reason or another. I mean, these are supposed to be institutions of higher learning. Exactly what are they learning there? Well, to answer that question, we have to look no further than one professor at Cornell University who, after hearing of the atrocity happening on the 7th of October in Israel, came out and publicly said he was exhilarated and energized about those atrocities. In Berlin, of all places, anti-Semites are going around Berlin painting Jewish homes with the Star of David. You can't even make this shit up. While you were sleeping, the Islamic State of Iran became the Human Rights Council of Social Forum. We're talking about a regime that shoots protesters with live rounds, executes people in public, and strips away all human rights for some people. This is the same country that funded Hamas to carry out the 7th of October massacre in Israel. And now they are the chair of Human Rights Council of Social Forum? You've got to be shitting me. I have a question for everybody out there. If there's no power in the Gaza Strip right now, how is it that Hamas is several feet underground in those tunnels? How are they keeping the lights on and how are they pumping in fresh oxygen for them to breathe? I don't know. Then there's the double standard that we're seeing. Just recently, the Secretary General of the United Nations came out and told Israel that they had to be mindful of civilian casualties. That's great and all, and I agree with that. But, did anyone hear the Secretary General come out and tell Hamas while they were on their murderous rampage through Israel that they had to be mindful of civilian casualties? No. In fact, civilian casualties is Hamas's preferred target. But you don't hear anything about that. Now, I know I will never be able to change everybody's mind. And some folks out there just simply are not willing to believe. They've been so indoctrinated and brainwashed that no amount of evidence is ever going to change their mind. And just before I close this off, I want to address those people out there 
who believe that the images and videos that are out there now are fake news of the atrocities. However, I just have this to say. Do you honestly believe that those videos were taken by those poor Israeli citizens who are running for their lives? No. It is now a known fact that those videos and images were captured by the Hamas perpetrators themselves and then uploaded onto their own social platforms. Now, I don't expect you to believe me, but do your fact checks and you will find out that this is not fake news. All right, so in closing, I just wanna say, I didn't produce this video to change people's minds or to pick any sides to tell you who's right or who's wrong in this conflict. I just wanted to shed some light on some of the misinformation that is out there and some of the fake news that you see coming out every day. Please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button down below. If you have any comments, please, you can put your comments down below as well. My name is Jose. This is Survival NS. Have yourselves a great day.